agriculture actually is a nexus for a number of um, environmental impacts. For one thing, uh, we don't have an infinite amount of land resources, uh, and we are already using about 40% of the Earth's surface area for agriculture. So there's not much room to expand. At the same time, if we do try to expand, there are potential impacts on uh, the natural environment. I don't think it's, it's fair to expect any one sector of, of the globe to solve this problem. It, scientists aren't going to solve it, farmers alone aren't going to solve it, we as consumers aren't going to solve it, but it is a, it's a combined effort. Here at NC State, we're trying to develop knowledge and also uh, try to distribute this knowledge to grow growers, you know, either small growers starting or established growers that want to do a transition. We've always been uh, ones uh, to try new things, and try to improve um, our efficiency, as, um, try to be better stewards of the resources that we have. Most all farmers, we want our children to have the opportunity to come home and farm. And so if I do a poor job and I erode the soil and I don't take care of it, then I'm setting my kids up for failure. The goal of sustainability drove multiple stakeholders to unite at the 2018 Clean Tech Summit. Here, they shared technological innovations across the agricultural industry focused on producing more with less. Innovative technologies are being applied to indoor farming to increase crop yield. So the basic components of indoor farming is the ability to control the environmental factors to improve plant production. To give you an example, uh, you can increase the tomato yield 10 times in the greenhouse versus uh, the way it's produced outside, right? Because you're really tuning the environment uh, to increase production. So this is uh, our light quality chamber. So in this chamber, we test different colors of light to see how we grow plants. Right, my grad student Hans Pojos is in charge of this project. And he has found that by adjusting the, the spectrum dynamically, it can increase the growth up to uh, 11 to 14% with the same amount of energy. All of our plants are grown basically in a clean room and their own rolling racks. I can see and view, visually inspect all of my plants in a matter of 10 minutes. And we produce 500 pounds of basil a week. The weather is not a factor anymore because it's a controlled environment. Uh, I can, you know, at any given time, know what my humidity is gonna be, know what my temperature is gonna be, know what my CO2 levels are gonna be. Um, my water temperature is always the same. Delivery method's always the same. And it doesn't matter if it's a hurricane outside or not, right? There's a lot of things that could be grown inside and gives us the ability to keep our food local year round. Like many innovative technologies in agriculture, precision agriculture is reconstructing the way scarce resources are allocated. We're looking at trying to uh, manage a field uh, on a smaller and smaller scale. So we're trying to manage, um, instead of the entire field as one unit, we're trying to manage it um, in much, much smaller increments so we can adjust um, the inputs that we put out there so we can put the right product at the right place, at the right time, and the right amount. Um, some of the more recent um, solutions are the UAVs, drones, um, the imaging that we're able to get, remote sensing. The drones are absolutely a, a fascinating part of our technology and a very necessary part in terms of being able to collect the data. Now with the drone, in a matter of minutes, you can fly the entire field have all of that data processed and back to you in a matter of minutes or at most hours. So instead of treating the field uniformly, now I'm targeting it to the spots where I know really need it. If a field is limiting factor is water, it could just mean that we applied less product. So we save money on, on the input side, or it could mean that we applied the same amount of product, only we put um, it in the right place. We put more over here where the soil is more productive, we put less over here where it was less productive, so we didn't waste as much. And the, the benefit of that is twofold. I mean, obviously there's the economic component where you're getting higher yields and you're getting more for your money, but the other side is that I'm not introducing that chemical or that fertilizer into the environment in a way that it's not going to be used productively. You know? To push efficiency forward, biotechnology is also pioneering agricultural clean tech. We use uh, microorganisms to improve crop yields. Microbes are uh, living organisms. Uh, they're very, very small. They could be fungi or they could be bacteria. They often have symbiotic relationships with plants. What we try to do is we try to find those symbiotic relationships, those instances where a microbe has a beneficial impact on the growth of a plant. We try to see where we can apply them and how we can incorporate them into farming. The second area uh, is in animal health and nutrition. 
And primarily what we're using are enzymes, which are protein catalysts. It's, so these uh, enzymes can be used in a variety of manufacturing processes and industrial applications and also in farming applications to improve efficiencies, uh, improve the digestibility of food, improve performance of food. Our aim is really to try to get more out of the land that we use and at the same time reduce the amount of environmental impact that we have um, in getting that output. And I think Novozymes has a huge role to play in that, uh, but we can't do it alone. So we have to understand um, how to interact and collaborate with a wide variety of actors. Um, certainly uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, governments, uh, as well as multi-stakeholder uh, organizations that are all working to figure out how to make agriculture more sustainable. There are very real food and water shortages affecting our globe today and technology serves as a, as a big piece of being able to address that, whether it's from the biological side, whether it's from the mechanization side, um, but it's important to make sure that all of these systems work together in a complementary way. So control environment together with conventional agriculture, together with uh, biotech agriculture, including GMOs, and together with organic agriculture, all of those components in the toolbox are gonna have to work together to be able to feed all the people. The way that we get around that is by finding ways in which we can produce more with less. Thank you.